Singapore is deepening its nuclear energy research capabilities, even as the country is unable to confirm how far regional neighbours have advanced in developing nuclear power. And for more on the nation's energy goals and how regional nuclear development could impact Singapore, we're joined by Professor Lawrence Williams, who is chair of the National Environment Agency's Nuclear Safety Advisory Panel. Professor, great to have you in the studio. Thank you for having me. Well, first of all, I want to get your view on what role you think nuclear power could play in Singapore's journey towards energy independence. Uh, well, I think it's got a role to play. Um, Singapore is a very advanced industrial country. Uh, it requires energy. Um, prosperity is directly linked to energy consumption. And so it's, it's quite prudent for uh, the Singapore government to look at the, the options. Um, you know, clearly no decisions have been taken yet whether to have a nuclear power program. But looking at the options uh, into the future you know, is, is a very sensible thing to do. And of course, with climate change, we're looking for green technologies. Uh, nuclear energy is a low carbon energy, so um, nuclear potentially has a, an important role to play. Mm. Now, despite its potential, there are some concerns, and the biggest ones that tend to come up have to do with nuclear waste management, and also people worried about living next to nuclear plants. How would you say this can be tackled? Well, I think it's, it's tackled by um, education, uh, talking to people, explaining what uh, nuclear energy, nuclear power is, um, explaining what nuclear waste is. Um, but because nuclear uh, power is, is a very high energy dense uh, medium, the amount of waste that's produced, you know, compared to the amount of electricity that we produce, is relatively small to other forms of industrial waste or even domestic waste. So although it's, um, people get quite concerned about it, uh, it's, it's a relatively straightforward um, activity to manage. Uh, and, you know, before you would go through with a nuclear power program in any country, you, you, you need to think about what you're going to do with the waste. But there are many countries in the world, the United Kingdom, France, uh, Sweden, Finland, are all in advanced stages of developing uh, underground waste depositories. Um, so it, I don't regard waste as being a, a, a showstopper to the delivery of nuclear power. Yeah, and apart from the countries you've already mentioned, actually many countries in Asia as well, China, India, Indonesia, Vietnam, they're all expanding yeah. their nuclear footprints. But what risks and also what opportunities do you think there can be when it comes to these regional developments and how that might impact Singapore? Well, that's why it's, imp it's important for Singapore to develop these capabilities, you know, irrespective of whether the government decides on a nuclear power program, Singapore having the capability to understand what nuclear technology is, what the risks associated with nuclear is, to be what I would call an intelligent observer, um, to be able to talk to your neighbouring countries if they are developing nuclear power programmes, to be able to influence them, but also have a, a, a deep understanding of uh, what it would mean for Singapore. So I think the direction of travel that Singapore is going with, with me as the chairman of the Nuclear Safety Advisory Panel, you know, is, is helping Singapore build that, that capability. And speaking of building that up, how important would you say is Singapore's involvement in nuclear safety agreements, both regionally and globally as well, to be plugged in not just to the agreements, but also the information that they might be privy to uh, that can be shared among the countries? I mean, international cooperation is very important. It's important for my country, it's important for advanced nuclear countries, it's important for Singapore. It's important for a number of reasons. Obviously, at the beginning of the journey, um, Singapore has a, a good base to start from in terms of it's got good universities, it's got good engineers, good scientists. Um, but being able to share knowledge and experience with countries with more um, advanced programs is absolutely essential. Mm. Well, going back also to the consideration of having nuclear as an energy source for Singapore, what kind of questions do you think we should be asking to determine whether nuclear energy is good for Singapore, is a viable option for us, weighing both the benefits and also the costs? Well, I, I think you're right. You, you have to look at the benefits first. Um, Singapore relies on energy. Any country that is prosperous relies on energy. 
most of your energy at the moment for electricity production is gas, you know, hydrocarbons. They're not going to last forever. Um, we know there's an impact of hydrocarbons on climate change. Uh, as, as the gas runs out, the price will go up. So in terms of you know, energy security, but national security, uh, you have to look at what the alternatives are. And the alternatives are nuclear, solar, wind. Uh, and of those three, given the geography of, of um, Singapore, nuclear has some, some advantages. There are disadvantages. Um, one of them is how do you convince the public that it's safe? Um, but if I tell you that around the world there are 450 nuclear reactors operating, there's been over 20,000 reactor years of operation, um, very safe operation. Mm. You know, the technology is very mature. Uh, and if these reactors are designed properly, if they're built properly, and if they're operated properly, mm -hmm. and they have a strong regulator, yeah. We should be all right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us, our Professor Williams. I've been chatting today with a Professor Lawrence Williams, who is chair of NEA's Nuclear Safety Advisory Panel.